What are we doing today? All right. We're, we are going to talk about who is worth a first. Mm. Or my first is worth what? It's basically rookie season. Right. So, I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're kind of in, 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 in weird trans, transformation here where some people, you know, may not be able to trade anymore. So, you know, we are still going to talk a good bit about that, but we're going to start trying to relate a lot more stuff to rookie picks and values and all that stuff. So we'll continue to talk trades. We'll continue to talk rebuilding teams. We'll continue to talk all that kind of stuff because there are still plenty of people that don't have trade deadlines like some communist regime. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I know this is a different show, but, you know, first... First move to make, get rid of trade deadline. Veto the trade deadline in the off season, at least until the playoffs start. That's a different show, but you probably hear the same thing on the next one. So, uh, <laughs> we got a couple guys here today that we wanted to talk about. You know, I think they're all within the range of a first at this point. Just maybe where where that value is currently, and and obviously as we get into rookie season and we start really diving into the tape and diving into uh, the, the analytics of everything, we'll we'll have a you know the, the order of the first round rookie picks will will probably change a little bit it seems like the top six or so are locked in uh, for the most part somebody might jockey for position a little maybe a quarterback gets back up there uh, as for now we want let, let's start with nico collins um i think it's interesting because i think he's worth the first and now tank dell's down for the rest of the season um so you know it's it's could you do you, do you sell now because, you know, what what could be the value could just continue going up like the yodeler and, and the price is right there? Um, mm-hmm. Or, you know, do you, do you just say, hey, he's a dog. Uh, we need more dogs and, you know, going to stick around. He's, he's kind of the, the big outside, you know, guy that you don't not a lot of teams necessarily have and lean on. But he's, he's so much more than that. He's, he's awesome in, in the yak. He's, I believe, fourth in yak, third in yak. Sorry. Yeah. Third and yak, 7.2 yak per reception. That's good for fifth. His yards per route run are 2.90. Oh, that's good for third. 11.9 ADOT. So maybe just out of the threshold of 12 that people like. Missed tackles for 16. So, you know, just getting painting the picture that he's he's not Mike Williams. Uh, you know, he, he he's not just your your outside guy. They move him around a good bit. Well, he, he is Mike Williams in a sense that he's your big body, that's chain what, moving target. That's, that's more or less what I was alluding to, yeah. And, and, and he can body you and go up right. over you, and, and he doesn't need a ton of separation. But as you can see, if you watch football games, and shout out to everybody that watches football games, he was separating like a motherfucker out there. That I put a clip out on Twitter where he ran a little whip route and just left. The, he put the guy on skates. The guy was done. There was not, he wasn't within seven yards of him and it yeah. was like an easy touchdown and he just put like he didn't he doesn't even need to gain that separation but he can at 6'4 215 I'm gonna have a hard time choosing anybody over Nico Collins like let's go right 85 targets that's 20th uh, 59 receptions that's 18th 991 yards that's good for ninth so you know just really at the top of all, all, almost all these statistical categories I know 20 and 18 was a little low but he's doing damage with the yards and doing damage with the yak 11th and TDs just in the top 10 top 12 in a lot of these categories his rec- uh, receiving grade from from PFF is number 10 um, you know, yeah, yards per reception, 16.8. Woo! That's good for number five. He's wide receiver 12 on the season. He missed a game um, so, and wide receiver 12. And then 17.6 points per game. That's good for wide receiver 10. So painting the picture of how good Nico Collins is, because I know there's probably a lot of people out there that thought he was muerto, um, which is dead, I believe, in Spanish. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um because there's he couldn't he couldn't be any good. It's he hasn't he hasn't broken out yet. So how could he be any good? You know, uh, and here we are. Uh, he was he he's he's broken out and he is just uh, you know dragging nutsacks on heads right now. Um, dicks yeah, I mean one of the right. most important stats too is he's connected to Stroud, right? Like, right. I mean the, he's he's performing and has continued to take some steps forward. And then you've got this season where obviously Stroud's come out of. Uh, left field for most people including myself just from an evaluation standpoint where you thought he would be at this point in right. his in his arc and and i mean nico is uh is 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 a driving force to some of that success so mm-hmm. yeah that's, yeah and i don't think you know i don't think it's not like they need to go you know they the 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 rising tide raises all ships so strauss got them in a position that they thought they would be in you know Confidently, the coaching staff is maybe thinking that, but they're probably thinking, hey, we, we got another year. Now they're already where they thought they might be by next year. Um, so, you know, I, yeah, I don't think you need to go out and replace Nico. You obviously have a good player in Tank Dell. Uh, you, you know, you have Mechie, you have Hutchinson, you have players all around. Maybe you re-sign Dalton mm-hmm. Schultz. 
And all of a sudden, this offense is just coming right back at you next season. So very good point with Nico being tied uh, to C.J. Stroud right there. So I guess the point is, I think everybody's in on Nico for a first, right? Yeah, it's which first? How high can yeah. you go? So everybody's in on a first. And I think, you know, I think you can immediately skip past that one through 12 through 10 phase, right? Yep. Yeah, we're talking super flex, tight, tight end, end premium. premium. So all the quarterbacks are in play. Tight ends get elevated. Brock Bowers is a top pick, definitely a late first all day. Right. So we just we just did a uh, startup mock with rookies. I think Nico was too low in that to begin with. Well, Nico's not on the sleeper right. apps. Uh, He's not high enough. List. Right. He's still way He's still down, down at like two hundred with Puka Nakua. So unless you're paying attention and scrolling down and know it. He, he's been devalued a bit in the few mocks that we've done. Everybody's commenting on it. Like, we did the mock yesterday, too. Like, it, you know, um, which we've explained this. But, like, I think sleepers going through and revamping their shit. They just got rid of all of our mocks. Uh, I think you know, they'll come back. but Maybe. Um, but, yeah, he, so he was at 7-6. I think he deserves to be in, at least in the fifth. Um, so that would, you know, put him in, in the round in, in the realm of, of neighbors and Roma Dunze and... Keon Coleman, who was 6'4 in, in that particular draft. And you can go check that video out. We'll be doing another one uh, in, a, in a week or two. We're about to start another draft. Brock Bowers was at 4'10. So, you know, would you take Nico Collins over that, you know, Keon Coleman, Ibuka range? I, I think I would. I think he's, you know, every everything that you said, he's 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 broken out now. He's on the right path and and we know what his scenario what his situation is right those those draft picks are, are great and those the, the new people coming in are are always really exciting but we're also here to win right we're here to we're here to score some points and and we see we've seen it on the field we've seen nico score we've seen him um succeed in that offense and so it, it would be hard for me to take somebody like uh like a keenan coleman um you know Ke keenan coleman has the higher ceiling probably but uh nico has the higher floor in my opinion and and, and a decent season uh ceiling to boot, boot if any <laughs> if these last couple of um you know last couple uh, weeks have anything to say about it yeah so. and i think these next couple of weeks are going to have even more to say about it because there's and, no you got sure. no tank dell well and that's that's the thing right there's not going to be any Tank Dell. Tank Dell went out pretty early in this past game where he, where Nico scored 34 fantasy points. So if if De Tank Dell's in there, he's he's probably not scoring 34, but he's still getting you 15 to 25. I mean, like? uh, we could pull up the schedule here. I bet it matters, um, really? Yeah, I mean it doesn't matter at all. Like Stroud's fucking slain, but they got they got the Broncos, the Jets, Tennessee, Cleveland, Tennessee. So. So right, there, the so right there, so right there, Broncos, but, Jets, that's two of the top five corners in the league with Sertan and Sauce. And at this point, he's probably going to get both of those guys. Yeah. I and I don't know who follows who and all that stuff. I don't stay up to date on exactly all the, the cornerback usage. But if they're smart, that's what they're going to do. Uh, and they're, they're both defenses that have been playing out of their minds. So, you know, that could be a little bit of a bummer for Nico Collins. And people could be, be saying C, but that doesn't do anything for me. Those guys are shutting everybody down. For the most part. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm not going to – I don't want to get too out of hand with, with Tank Dell, and I also don't want to give Tank Dell too much credit in terms of Nico Collins. Like, I love Tank Dell, and I want to give him all the credit, but I don't want to take away from Nico just because Tank's there. Yeah. Because Nico's doing just fine with Tank, and if Tank goes out, which, I mean, he's a small dude. He's been in and out already this first year. not trying to say he's injury prone, but, like – you know, if, mm. if he does go down, Nico is just like an extremely right. valuable asset. No, a Brown League winner, baby. Even with even with him in there, he's just fine. So, you know, he's like having two bushes in the hand. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So I think I would take I'd take him over Keon Coleman. Yeah. Um, I take day. him over Becca. And then I think that that's where you get what to about the point. Odunze, Bowers and neighbors. I that's think, the question. I think I think once you get to Odunze, I start to say, I mean, that's you know, you could say Odunze is essentially kind of, you know, I'm not saying he's Nico Collins. I think Odunze probably moves a little better than Nico Collins does, um, but Nico's great. So you know, I guess I could, I could make a case to say, yeah, I guess I would, I'd be okay with Nico over Rome. Uh, but I think Neighbors is probably where you draw the line. And if you, if you're a tight end guy, then Brock Bowers is has every right to be in there as well. So I, you know, I, I think I probably draw the line at, you know, what would that be, one four, yeah, um, for me. Yeah, and one four is essentially neighbors. If, if and I, I think it's I think it's a coin flip with Rome. I think Rome could easily be the second best uh, wide receiver in this class. He's awesome. Nobody's I mean, gonna like that. It's neighbors, dude. Undisputed. Right. What are you even thinking? I mean, I've watched every game the Huskies have played this year. Adunze's been awesome. 
uh, you know, just big and big time spots um, and just moves different and just has such great body control for as big as he is and pretty good speed. So, um, and just, a, you know, a really good route runner. So, uh, you know, I think, I think those, they're, they're fairly even there. So, um, anybody have anything staunchly different to say there? Yeah, I think you covered it. I, I, I think the, the only piece of this would be is, um, and, and we'll probably have a little trend on this, but, uh, I, I think you could probably get more than a, like it, it, you could probably go and get Nico for one of your first, right? Uh, pretty easily, which tells me that you might be able to get something else in there too, depending on depending on the owner and that. But um, I know Nico's been, you know, he's he's kind of kind of gone off this last couple of weeks. But I I just I have a feeling that he's kind of uh, still not undervalued. Quite, still, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just um, I mean, I know sleepers behind, but but I I feel like if he was in the minds of the you know the general public a little bit bit more i think he'd be up there a little bit more now yeah. maybe with the tank dell injury maybe that changes the whole scenario and the situation but yeah. um I, I think it's a it's it's a great discussion to have because i think you could potentially especially if you're a contender nico might be a a great, a great option for you if you if you still have that you know if the trade deadline hasn't passed and or if you don't have a trade deadline right. so yeah I like it. Uh, you know, I don't think. you're gonna need more than a late first. Haters, haters are me. probably still thinking that Nico's gonna get replaced because they can't get past that he didn't, didn't break out. Didn't have any production then, yeah, in his as, first two years. As, the third yeah. wider, third year wide receiver breakout. How could he be any good? A thing of the past. Anyway, uh, let's let's go to uh, a guy who's just recently added an apostrophe to his name and, and <laughs> uh, switched his <laughs> switched switched his whole last name. Devonnie so. Chan, nailed it. Devon A Chan. Is yep. that what we're going you with? Did. Yeah, you got it. I thought you it was. Wow. Me too. I thought it was First a try. Is it not a Chan? It's, a, it's a, like Jackie a Chan. Jack Someone was Chan. like in the comments. A -chan. Like, it's spelled A Chan, and I was like, actually, it's is is it was just the letter A, and I was like, no, nah, it's A Y E. It's A Chan. <laughs> We're gonna get phonetic on me. Yeah. Like don't correct me incorrectly. Yeah. What a what a guy just changing everything up on us. When he gets to the pros. He did. He added that apostrophe. It wasn't recently. It was mid-off season because Sleeper had him in there as Devin, and then it's, now it's Devon. And uh, Texas Aggies were calling him A-Chain. So, yeah. you know, it's a cool nickname. His name's A-Chan. His nickname's A-Chain. You get that money, you add the apostrophe. That's, that's the way it works. That's right. Boys. That's right. Um, so, same game here uh, with, with A-Chan. Worth a first here. Now, we're in a little bit of a weird running back class here because it seems like you're going to get a lot of your running backs in the second round, at least right now, as far as super flex tight end premium goes. Um, there's a chance by the end of this that there's a second tight end at the end of uh, the first round for tight end premium. Uh, Sanders from Texas had a great game in front of everybody in a Big 12 championship and could have another big game in the national championship. Um, probably, probably won't. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, he, he could get up in there and knock even, you know, maybe a, a running back who was grasping on there. So it's Travion or, or, or Allen or, or somebody like that could be one of the running backs, but there's not a lot of them. So maybe HN even more valuable uh, coming into this class worth of first. Um, but just super explosive. We've obviously kind of seen him on and off the field. We saw him kind of come back at the second half of this game. Uh, which you know, I guess is kind of good to see that they're they felt confident enough to not. Yeah, but why they were blowing out that team in, in Washington and they didn't need to ride him. And it was like well, he I got think, most of his production in garbage time. Right. I'm like, why? Well, I, th I think for both parties, you get a little confidence back. You know, so I think he goes in, he gets a little game game run. You can't really prepare for that. Um, he can kind of do what he needs to do. So where are we cutting the the line for? Achan here. Um, Big D, you go first. I know you got him ridiculously high in your rankings. <laughs> I do, man. I he's he's I, he, for me he's he's very similar to Nico um, for for two reasons. One, he's just he's <laughs> he's a league winner when he's on the field. I mean, you look at his points, you look at his production. You know, obviously there's the injury risk and the injury concern, but man, I, he is just. I mean, this is his rookie year, and what he what he put up this last game? I think uh, 25. 25 points, twenty seven, you know, fifty one, and and that Denver blowout. I mean, he he just has the potential to be a super flex position, you know, meaning that you know he he could be a um you know a quarterback as far as points go, and so so for me, he's the kind of player that I like to target. Um, I I don't think you have to spend as high, but I think he's in that mid 
uh, late first for sure, 100 percent all day. He's in the mid mid first for me, just like Nico was. Um, and you know, I mean, you you said it. This isn't a very, um, you know, eye catching running back uh, 2024 class that's coming out. And so, you know, he he's a potential target there where. If I'm, uh, you know, I'm feeling good, I, I might give my mid to, to, I don't know if I'd give my early, right? If, especially if I earn that early, I don't think I'm going to build with uh, build with running backs. But as far as value goes, I mean, if if I have it, I might might try to give a, a, an early first and get something back in in on top of HN, of course. But yeah, I, I think that's I think that's fair. I think, you know. There could be somebody, there, there could be some people who are looking to get out because it's like, hey, you know, uh, maybe you weren't in, but you kind of got forced to pick him where he was because the value was so good at the end of a first or something like that or early second. And you're like, hey, he, he's performing. Uh, maybe I can maybe I can sell and, and swap him out for, you know, a Dunze or something like that. Um, I think once again, I, I might drop him. I might say I'd rather have a Dunze here confidently and maybe Bowers, um, but you know, I think it's I think it's kind of right there. Maybe maybe one or two players behind him. But like you said, I mean, man, I, he's so damn explosive. He's putting up. He's everything you want. Um, you know, I'm not sure that it'll be you know long in the league where he's a a, a bell cow, but he doesn't need to be. He's he's so damn effective, no. and he's in the just the best situation sickest, possible. Sickest um, position. And you know, if he could just if he stayed on the field right now through through these through the season, I mean, he'd probably be you know RB. Anywhere from you know Three? one to to four, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, what a roller coaster ride this has been because it was one point to start the year off, and then fifty, and then three banger weeks after that, and then boom, back where you were, and mm -hmm. then back. Now he's back. Ah, oh, one point again. Damn. Then misses a game, and then and then twenty five. You know, it's just like yeah. the the roller coaster ride that has been H A. And if you have H A. And if you have him, like Hutch on. How can, how can you forget, you know? How can you not be like, man, I should just hold on to this motherfucker because not only is he explosive, but he, he's doing what he was doing at Texas A&M. Like, he, he, the, one of the touchdowns he had was a I mean, short yardage run where he banged even, off some guys. and like It's probably even better than what bounced was going off on and, at Texas A&M. Well, sure. offense is just, I just mean in terms of being able to take the ball between the tackles and, and actually, you know, be productive that way. And and he's he's doing more than just hitting big ass plays, but then he's also I mean hitting these big ass plays. And how can you guard him? How can you guard anybody on this offense when you got Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle and and Mike McDaniel's just yeah. just wizard just wizarding it up? Like I mean, it's yeah, just I incredible. I, I I'd have a hard time coming off a chain. I mean, I don't know that you're gonna get like a Kyron Williams usage out of him like the Rams are doing. I think that the, the, the I don't Dolphins, want that. right? The Dolphins will continue to to bring in veterans or whatever to fit the scheme to do what they do. Um, probably just more 49er uh, but one castaways. Of the, one of the best lines in the in. league is is scheming um, my man into space in the most opportune position with lethal weapons on the outside like, yeah. and and a very good quarterback. Like, I'm, I'm yeah. Give me, give me. I mean, outside of the top three, I'm not mad if you want to take Gage. In. No, I'm I'm not either. But I think I think I'd move him back behind Bowers there in in premium. Um, I just you know I think. When you have, you know, look at just, you know, obviously A-Chan is doing his thing. I mean, but Trey McBride just stepping into kind of, you know, where you think Bowers will just come right in and be doing, I, you know, I, I can't argue with that either. So, um, especially premium. Shout guys. out to Trey McBride. Whoa, Shout pat, out to Trey McBride. Pat ourselves on the back for that one. Jeez. Yeah, I'll take that. So, also, the state of these running backs coming in and the state of the running backs in the league. I mean, this is, this is what you want out of the running back position. So, um, yeah. You know, I, th I think just to kind of put a bow on that, it's not just this class. It's that, you know, you're kind of looking around at the rest of the league and yeah, maybe, maybe he does miss three or four games here, but shit, the, the mark, he was still RB four for like three weeks after he left uh, this, this last time. So um, yeah, man, he's, he's been awesome. Um, so uh, let, let, let's move on to, uh, well, I guess we got two more. We'll go Brock Purdy next, obviously coming off a big win there, you know, had a section of the season where everybody was doing a lot of I told you so's there goes a uh, a stocking too stuffed with uh, information here that's what happens we stuff your stockings full they fall off the the, uh, the railing of the mantle there um, 
Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas, Holidays. Hanukkah. Kwanzaa. <laughs> yeah. Christmas surprise, Brock yeah. Purdy. Um, so Brock Purdy comes in, plays well against the Eagles, and you know now there's some MVP talk. Well, now that fires up the haters even more. They're super mad about it. And <laughs> you know, they're just like, he's not any good. He's just in a system, and it's like, what fucking quarterback who's producing is not in a good system? Show him to me, like. Right. Justin Fields, oh yeah. damn, Justin I mean, Fields. That's you know, yeah, and he's everybody's worried about his long term, uh, you know, view in the league. Not because he doesn't put up fantasy points, because you know we don't know if he what system he is in and if and if he can run it. If he gets in, you know, they, they should put they should bring in, uh, yeah. what's his, who, who's the guy from Ravens and the 49ers before that? Uh, Tyler Huntley. No, the coordinator. Um, Canada. No, it was, it was oh, the God, Ravens no. guy with Lamar. Um, and then he was on the 49ers with Kaepernick before that. And anyway, I, they just got rid of him and replaced him with Munkin. Yeah. Anyway, they, that's who they should bring in with fields, uh, and, and get him under, you know, same, same training wheels Lamar had anyway. Yeah. I mean, ask Trevor Lawrence, if you need to have a system, right. and Some it's, kind of decent coaching staff around you, you know, <laughs> like, do, should Brock Purdy be the MVP? I mean, probably, probably not, but I mean, he's, 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 it's a stupid award that goes to a, you know, the most wins and the best quarterback usually essentially, um, you know, and if he wasn't a seventh round pick and he's putting these numbers up right now, people will probably be all over him. But mm -hmm. since Greg he, Roman, Greg Roman, since he was a seventh round pick and people were already hating because they wanted Lance or whatever. And they're just trying to they won't get off the boat here and just say, hey, I was wrong. Brock Purdy can actually come in here and ball. Uh, you know, Brock Purdy's out there throwing anticipatory throws game after game after game after game. Um, and yes, the system is really good, but this is not what Jimmy G was not doing this in the system. Anybody who Kyle Shanahan has had outside of Matt Ryan. Uh, at least, you know, hasn't been putting up numbers like this. Brock Purdy is QB7 on the year, 19.5 points per game. Uh, that's number six overall. Um, he is seventh in yards, fourth in touchdowns, and 23, 23rd in attempts, 18th in completions, and 20th in, in interceptions. So putting up big numbers, and, you know, they're, they're a run first team. Um, mm -hmm. And then on top of all that, he's, you know, number one in yards per attempt by a full yard um, over two. I think he's at like 9.4. 10th in air yards per attempt, 17, 7.9, uh, 11 11.5 percent uh, attempts of 20 plus yards in the air or more. That's tied for 11th. San Fran is 11th in yak. So the the shit that everybody's trying to sell that, oh, it's all run after the catch. Like, yeah, that that's the Shanahan system and they have all the players to do so with. But it's not just that's not everything like he's he's completing the ball in the air at a very, very high clip. Uh, he, he's playing extremely well. Really don't understand the hate on Brock Purdy. If he was on the Patriots, would he look terrible right now? Probably so. Uh, you know, there's not that many quarterbacks that are going to be elevating that. But, you know, I'm not calling him Tom by any means. But Tom went through the same discourse because he was a six-round pick. Um, and he's, he's I'm not saying he's Tom Brady by any means. But, like, Puka's going through this right now because he's a fifth-round pick. And there's no way he could be. A, it just It's bullshit how long the stigma stays with you of your draft pick like who cares at this point he could play he's their quarterback so with all that being said all the bullshit aside of saying that it's just the system and it's only yak it's not just yak they're middle of the pack in yak he's doing a whole bunch of stuff and delivering the ball down the field as well throwing pretty balls purdy worth the first purdy's worth the first yeah yeah all day which first how high I mean, I don't think it's in the Adunze area or Bowers area. I think we're, I think we gotta, you know, pull back there a little bit, right? It hasn't been yet, but I mean, I mean, he's QB seven on the year. God damn, he's not going anywhere. Talk about being in a great system with weapons all around him. I mean, he's just yeah. They're gonna lose some up. weapons, but they're gonna add some weapons. You know, right. like it's it's he's, he's lighting it up, <clears throat> and they're mm -hmm. the best team. They just bop the Eagles on the head. The Eagles are the best team in the league. They just bop them boys on the head. Yeah, is it bop? Yeah. Look at us. We got three losses. Who gives a fuck? Bop, bop yeah. the boys on the head. Who's the who's the big dick in the NFC right now? It's the 49ers. And who's leading that fucking charge? Well, it's Kyle Shanahan. Big cock and Brock. It's fucking Brock Purdy. <laughs> um, got the Seahawks next week, which I don't like that. Um, but trap game, trap game, trap game <laughs> for sure. And I don't think the Rams. I think the Niners have lost to the Rams in like a decade, so that's got to be coming. But is it uh, in that? Keon Coleman, Ubeka range, for that, sure. That mid, that you know, kind of mid late, first that you that you'd be putting Brock in in there. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that sounds about right. I mean, uh, like J.J. McCarthy or Brock, uh, give me Brock, Brock all day. Yeah, uh, Penix or Brock is, well, you, got the you know, hat on. that's that's I've hard. i big Penix guy on this pod. Hurts, hurts, oh. my, hurts my heart, but, you know, at, at this moment in time, I think I'd go Brock over Penix. Yeah. Just you for know, reference, uh, in this last startup mock we did with rookies, uh, go check that show out. Uh, let's see, Michael Penix went 4-3, Brock Bowers went Brock Purdy. Four ten. Brock per- Brock Bowers went four ten. Purdy goes five two, and then it's Malik Neighbors and Adunze and Coleman and Ibeko after Brock Purdy right there. So I, like, I'm not mad. You want to take the quarterback and Superflex? He's not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. Brock yeah. Purdy's here to stay. Let me get a Purdy. Yeah, yeah, and he's not a running back, right? So his his um, he's his not. draft stock as far <laughs> as you know, Mister Irrelevant and all that kind of stuff. Like, well. You know, that still I, I think, weighs heavily in a lot of people's thoughts, but I don't give a fuck. It, it does, but but my point is, is that that normally weighs heavy because of the position, right? right. The quarterbacks a whole different beast when it comes to evaluations and long term holds and and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I think that he's in a he's in a great system. He's playing well. He's he's playing above average for sure, yeah. and uh, I I don't see why if you're looking for a stable quarterback two with quarterback one upside from time to time, like he's, he's it, you know? Um, and, th- and I think that's what you would hope from Penix. And I think that's what you would hope from, you know, um, obviously with um, Caleb Williams, you're, you're, you know, he's, he's not in that and maybe even Drake may, but, but those, those top tier after the top tier quarterbacks coming out, I mean, like it, you know, even in the NFL right now, there, there's not too many, quarterbacks that no. I want to have over Brock Purdy is, no. as far as you know it's kind um, of like the state of the running backs there's not that many that you trust right now you know yeah up in that range and, and Brock seems to be emerging I mean this guy's only played what I mean we're what are we at week 13 here he came in week eight last year or so mm-hmm. and then had offseason surgery where they were like how long is this going to take or is he even right. going to come back right so um, yeah, I, I think I think we're all pretty much in agree. We've all been in agreement with a lot of this here, so that's you know I think, I think we're feeling all right, you know. <laughs> yep. um, all right, let's not, let's not quite. I mean, I'm taking these guys higher than you're, you're willing to take yeah. them. You want them rookies? Yeah. Give me the bush in the hand. Pretty close though. Pretty close. So, yeah. anything else on on Purdy before we get out of here? I think I think we're all you know, you know Purdy over Penix at this point. Maybe maybe maybe. Um, Jaden Daniels can can sneak up in there with the rushing upside and and and, mm-hmm. and maybe come close. It depends on what his draft stock looks like. But yep. you know, for now, I think it's Purdy all day over over Keon Coleman for me. Um, so that's kind of the line of you know, man. Other than I mean, dude, I could take, I could give you the one three for Purdy at this. Woo, point. that's mean, spicy. Whoa, dude, what, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Drake May, no, Marvin Harrison is one or two, and then mm. Caleb Williams, and then Drake May. So I mean. Yeah, I like, think I'm, I think I'll I think I'll take I'm gonna take Purdy over Drake May, I think. All right. I like it. Spicy. Spicy. What are we doing? What do you want out of Drake May but to be Purdy? Well, sure. Can I get QB seven out of my one three? I'll take that <laughs> all day <laughs> all day. For sure. That's easy. Yeah. I mean I'm I'm Fuck sticking it. With, what are we doing? I'm sticking with May. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Yeah. I like yeah. to play it a little safe sometimes. I feel like playing it safe. With with H N, I want to go a little risky. Well, Purdy, I'm playing safe, baby. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go to. We, we mentioned him here. Uh, let's let's hit the last one. Puka Nakua. Uh, talked about him on one of the last shows about just you know, <laughs> went out there, had a couple of down weeks, just like Purdy, and the haters came storming right back, like, oh, he was never a top twelve. He was never top eighteen. He was never this. He was I never knew that. it. And it's like the only thing good about those comments was that there was some shade towards keep trade cut. That I like, right, but. which is a homeless shelter of. <laughs> ADP, website. just awful trash website. I can't believe anybody even cites that thing. Hot garbage. <laughs> the website itself is good, but the content right. it makes it and how they gather the how data. They gather the how data they gather the data is just random people pressing boxes and yeah, real like, quick to get to the data they want to get yeah. to. That is not an accurate way yeah, to collect data. You might get thirty percent of people who sit there and actually hmm. go, "What should I do here?" Actually, I don't know about this. Let me hit the refresh button to get a different question so that I accurately give this my fair do. No, people are not doing no. that. The idea, yeah, definitely not the scientific it's... method going on over there. That's right. for sure. If you restricted who was allowed to answer those questions, then you yeah. got something. But if you let the top twenty rankers answer the, you know, in fantasy pros or whatever, answer those questions, it might, you know, it might be some validity <laughs> to it. But 
other than that, that's a, that, uh, that remains a homeless shelter in San Francisco. Um, no offense to San Francisco. So Puka has emerged from his homeless shelter and he is, he is going straight to the top again. If he was drafted where JSN was, everyone would be elated with their first wide receiver in their rookie draft and be like, Oh my God, I smashed it here. He's going to be, he, you know, might just put him in the fourth or fifth overall wide receiver ranking right now. Um, but he wasn't, and you know, he has to apparently earn a little, a little bit more. Like, you know, he learns from his father and I can feel it down in my plums, but you know, for the people who felt it in their plums and took Puka, yeah. you know, you're fired up. And you know, so I think at this point, I mean, everybody was telling you to get out and Hey, listen, I get it. You know, you can play the percentages and you can get out and be safe and get whatever first you could for however, you know, whenever you could get it. And then. When he wasn't doing well, they're like, hope you got that first. And it's like, dude, he's, he's worth way more than a first right now. You know, I think we're going to end up with a similar similar uh, conversation to wrap the show up here. But, you know, where where's the line for for Puka? Is it is it over Keon Coleman? I know we're using him as the as the gate. Camp. Maybe Troy Franklin or something will end up where Keon Coleman is, at, you know, or, 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 you know, Mitchell or, or maybe somebody. Will, but the, the idea of where that kind of value of that pick is, it seems like there's going to be you know, a couple of spaces in there where it's like, you know, one, one through one, three, and then maybe like four and five, and then maybe like six through eight or something like that, or six through nine, uh, depending on where some quarterbacks go or whatever, or uh, where Bowers goes or yada, yada, yada. So where's, where would you put Puka in this grand scheme of first big D? Yeah. I mean, I think the challenge for me with Puka is, is not Puka himself. It's Stafford. You know, we talked about at the top of the show, Nico and, you know, the system that he's in and what's going on there. And then with Sean McVay, you know, went out and got Stafford, obviously had golf prior to that, has pretty good success with what seems to be two great quarterbacks, uh, you know, golf off going to Detroit and, and carrying on the torch and so so my hesitancy with with Nakua as from a from a ceiling perspective or from a long-term dynasty outlook perspective is just that it's the situation that's going to change around him and what does that look like but at the same token the dude's produced yeah. in every situation that he's been been in so so I think for me he's a, he's a little bit lower than Nico so he's probably closer to the end of the first uh mm -hmm. you know say like a um, like, I think I would have them, uh, you know, I think I'd still take a Odun over them. I think I'd still take, you know, I definitely would take neighbors or, or any of those kind of guys. I, I'd probably take, uh, um, Puka? Puka before any running back. I'd probably take them, you know, before like worthy or, um, you know, the I'm trying to remember the Oregon, Oregon wide Franklin. receiver, uh, Franklin. Yeah. You know, I, I think I would take him before all those, but, but some of those other guys, like I, I just, he's not touching the first uh, early first for me. And most of those mids, I think I would rather personally gamble on, Nuka. on those over new. Yeah. Coleman Coleman's probably, you know, Coleman, uh, Jaden Daniels, Brock Bowers, all those uh, neighbors, of course, like all those, I, I think I would ha have over Puka. Puka. I got to completely disagree. I mean, <laughs> again, what are we doing here? I mean, Jay what are you holding it down for the vets? He's what a, do you want out of these picks? Fucking, except for Puka Nakua. Yeah. Can I get Puka with one of these picks? I'll take that. Yeah. Like, w seriously. I that mean, sounds good. I'll like, like honestly, he, <laughs> when, when Cooper Cup scored that late touchdown in that game and Puka Nakua came up to him and was congratulating him like he was Cooper Cup and Cooper Cup was Puka, it was almost like... Oh, I'm glad Cooper Cup got some in this game because yeah. I was getting everything, and I'm super pumped for my boy who hadn't been getting shit. Yeah, and, like he's the new he's the new Cooper Cup. Like I don't what's his forty talk? What's his forty yard dash again? I think it's a four six two, and he's a fifth round pick. That had so many of the people that y'all might watch out completely on Puka Nakua. And now look at him. Like it, was that was that a seventy yard touchdown run I don't, or catch? Like did the forty yard dash matter right there? Like does it fucking matter? And I don't even care about Stafford. I mean, like we've talked about it a couple times. Like he's there probably at least another year or two because they owe him sixty million dollars. And maybe he's not. Maybe he is. I don't even really care, man. I can't be worrying about QB situations that much when it comes to a player who is this talented in terms of being exactly where he needs to be, like being unbelievable hands yak out the wazoo and, and another schemer like a top three schemer in the league like I don't think McVay's going anywhere he was about to leave because it was like oh shit we're rebuilding and then boom all of a sudden 
they're they're beating some of the better teams in the league right now, and they're they like they're, they're in the wild card race. And I yeah. mean, like uh, the the scheme is good. It, their quarterbacks are going to want to come play for Los Angeles Rams. So I'm if Stafford goes, someone else good is going to want to come. They're going to be able to bring in somebody good, and like Puka. <laughs> Puka's right where he needs to be every single time, and the hands are so short, and he the way he plays, and the way he blocks. It's just everything about this man is incredible. And he had a couple of down weeks there for a second where it gave you a little window, and now, boom, right back to being, like, one of the a best A couple down league. weeks because Stafford hurt, got hurt, and then they, like, we I, there was a comment a while ago, and, and Big D, like, you know, I, it's understandable to have that, and I think we had a comment a while ago of, of you know, Stafford kind of going that I saw and, you know, Stafford, you know, what's going to happen with Stafford and yada, yada, yada. Well, you know, they do owe him damn near like 60 million over the next two years. And that's a lot of money for whoever you are. And if, listen, Stafford's made a ton of money. So he doesn't if, need it. If health wise, he was like, hey, I, I, I physically don't want to do this anymore. He could certainly walk away. Um, but, you know, I, I think like you said, they're I think they're better than faster than they thought. They, they haven't had a lot of picks, but they have done a good job of hitting with the, the, the later picks that they have. Puka the cool. Um, and yeah. I, I'm Googling it right now. Yeah, Cooper Cup was a fourth or fifth round pick with a slow 40 who couldn't be any good. You know, I'm pretty sure they're one of the younger teams in the league at this point. So they've, yeah. uh, they've assembled one of the youngest teams in the NFL, according to Spot Track. The Rams are the average player of 25.49, which is younger than every team except for the Packers. So. You know, they, they've, they've done a good job of the back end guys and they, they, they don't pay some of those guys. They let them walk and go other places and do well. And, and they just keep kind of restocking that. And now you get your whole plethora of draft picks back like they haven't you know, they haven't had it because they said F them picks and won the Super Bowl. And now you've right. got to have your first and your second and your third and, you know, yada, yada, yada. So you can you can get a difference maker um, at the at the, uh, you know, at different positions there. Um, and, you know, what's. Puka's not getting replaced, bro. Like it's not. You know, he's done. Like they're not like, oh, we need another receiver now because we, you know, Puka's a fifth rounder. Um, right. And you know, again, I think just to reiterate your point, Stafford's owed a lot of money. Even if he leaves, Brett R- Ripon Ripon is not going to be the guy that goes on and replaces <laughs> Matthew Stafford. I know you you saw a game without Stafford, and that's what Puka. Will, but it's like that's not what they're going to do. They're going to do something else. Like. You know, you might ha- you might have to deal with a you know a little bit of a mid year, but I mean, Puka's already just dominating targets out there. He's ninth in targets, 113. He's wide receiver 11 points per game wise. Yak, he's number 10 yards per reception, uh, number 22 yards per route run, number nine. You know, receiver value for him, he's number 14 overall. That's that's PFF's ranking. Missed tackles forced eight. That's 16th. He's number seven in, in first downs accounted for for the team. Over a thousand yards, so sixth there overall as a fifth round pick who's slow the rams are just a good situation because those guys who are there one and two are just going to get hammered with targets so yeah i agree for the most part big um, d you're not wrong you know it's not wrong to take those high picks the, the, that's insulating your value and you're covering yourself that that's that that pick can't lose any value it's only going to gain value and for what you most likely paid for puka it's a huge return so i'm not going to be mad if anybody wants to do that or calls me crazy because I don't want to do that. But, I mean, I'm telling you, I got Puka in a league, and when the when the draft comes around next year, like, I ain't trying to move him for a top first. Like, I, I, I'd i trade him for Marvin Harrison Jr., but, like, in a, in a one QB league, that's pretty much it. Let me get Puka. I'm keeping him. I'm holding tight. Let's go. I think I, I mostly agree. I'd probably put him right in that same – Vain as neighbors as, in Odunze? as yeah as, as Nico, um, I think he's you know, and he's a little younger, which you know I don't know, but you know and yes, I think you should get bonus points for being tied to, uh, you know McVeigh Stroud. No, oh, Stroud. like if you're Nico, like that's you know mm-hmm. yeah two years right. younger, but you're tied to yeah you're tied to Stroud. That certainly and you know I think, which I mean there's probably only one more year left on his contract, so they're gonna have to extend him, which I don't know why they wouldn't. Right, you got a rookie deal, you can. <laughs> So you got a rookie quarterback. Anyway, yeah. B- Big D, you wanna you wanna say anything else before we wrap up? After because because I feel like we just really were mean to you. <laughs> no, you weren't mean to me at all. I, it, they're all valid points. I, I just I, I think with Puka for me, he is a, a extremely steady wide receiver. I, I just feel like some of those other guys, I I, I like the ceiling more, you know. And so I I completely understand where Jay's coming from and. 
and you know to 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 draft safe um and that's that's the epitome of drafting safe in my opinion because he's just so he's so solid but but for me i think i would i think i'd rather have neighbors right because i feel like the ceiling on neighbors well let's rephrase that the floor on neighbors is close to puka the ceiling on neighbors is higher than puka in my opinion so that that's where that kind of comes from but again i mean puka's proved it you know, we'll see what his value looks like in the off season as, as we kind of talked about this off the mics, you know, the values change, right? If this is your first year playing dynasty, like the values in season are different than the values out of season. And so we'll, we'll see where Puka ends up during, during the off season. You know, obviously these rookies are going to continue to climb the, the more coverage that's on them and the closer we get to the draft, you know, they, th- those values of course are going to change, but, um, but, but, I, I think it's a good problem to have all, all, all four of the players that we talked about, Achan, uh, Brock, um, Puka and Nico. I mean, these are all great players. And, um, and, it, and if I was competing, I think these are our targets again, that we, we said this before, but, but if I could get, uh, you know, if I have a mid first one in a, in a trade that I did, if I can go and get Puka or Nico right now to help me this year, hell yeah. Yeah. I would do that yeah. in a heartbeat, you it's know, all situational. Um, yeah, it's all situational, exactly. Yeah, so. and well, I, you know, I, I didn't do it on purpose, but all these guys uh, were all guys who were slept on. Nobody cared about. I mean, A Chain obviously was a rookie coming in and was you know divisive right. because of size, Bring but mine. you know, but Purdy, Puka, and Nico, all guys that nobody wanted, gave a shit about. Uh, so you know, just just a reminder that those guys can smash and do hit, um, and and their you know patience is something that you should practice. Um, And, and, you know, we're about to do another show, so be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, and we'll talk a little bit more about, um, you know, patience or or re-rolling or, you know, those kind of things. And, you know, it's just going to come down to how you play and how you like to play and, you know, what your confidence in that player is kind of moving forward. So, and there are certainly better times to attack certain uh, players. So uh, I think we can can cover that uh, in another show as well. So, um, Big D... Uh, good to see you again. Be sure to like, subscribe yeah, down below, five star review, five dollar holler for the Discord, three extra shows a month uh, on the pleasure chest. This is what we call the uh, Patreon what, what show. We call the Patreon show. So um, hope to see you there. We appreciate you guys, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace.